Hey there, and welcome to another Quick Tip Tuesday. And today I want to show you my seven favorite off-grid yard tools. So the first one, of course, is the most common tool that everyone has, and it's a mower. I have this real mower here, and I really, really like it. We've had several mowers in the past. I've used gas mowers. My husband and I have never actually owned one, but I've used several before. And they were always difficult to use in that they required, you know, gas, and sometimes gas and all mixed together, and then you gotta try and get them started, and it was always a pain. And then when we um, bought this house, we actually bought corded electric ones, and then you have to, like, bring the cord around with you as you're going through the lawn, and it almost feels like you're vacuuming the lawn but the way you gotta haul the cord around. And my grandpa had a cordless electric one and that one worked okay, but it really bogged down in heavy grass and stuff like that. So they all have their ups and downs. And I would say this one is no different except for it's much easier to use. It's really easy to push. There's no cord to contend with. It doesn't bog down in the heavy grass. The only one issue that I have with it is that it doesn't catch all of the grass, which is totally fine. The grass catcher catches probably 75 to 90% of it. A little bit of the rest of it goes into the grass and that's not a problem. It's actually better for the grass that way. So maybe it's not a bad thing after all. So it has a nice grass catcher and then the real mower and it's really easy to push and use. Mine does make a little noise right now. I need to, to grease it. and But that's all there is to it, you know. There isn't really a whole lot of maintenance. Just grease the, the moving parts here. And then once a season, maybe twice, depending on how big your yard is, just, you know, um, sharpen the blades and that's it. And then it's pretty much good to go forever. <laughs> These things last forever. So you buy one, there's no maintenance costs if you can do the work yourself, you know, and that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. I really, really, really enjoy my real mower. I kind of wonder why I didn't get one sooner and I kept contending with those corded electrics. So the second thing I want to talk to you about, um, because mower is probably the most common yard tool that people use um, and buy, the second most common yard tool is going to be a weed whacker. This is what I use. I'm not sure exactly what this is called. It might be called a scythe or a scythe or something like that. That's what my friends called it a long time ago when they had one of these. And basically it's got two sharp blades on either side and then you kind of use it like you would if you were golfing. You have one hand lower than the other, you kind of swing back and then you like whack the weeds at the bottom and it just chops them off. You don't have any string to have to buy or to you know, do anything like that. You do have to sharpen this just like you would the real mower, but I do it like once a season before you know the season really gets going and it's good for the rest of the season. Assuming we don't beat it up and hit fences and things with it like we shouldn't, but um, I get these at thrift stores. They're always really in inexpensive. Um, I've never seen them anywhere else, so I don't know where else to get them. This thing works great. I mean, it chops off the weeds and it's really easy to maintain, unlike many of the string trimmers I've used that are much more difficult in trying to get the string to wind and all that crap. Plus there's no gas, of course, um, to have to fill it with. Or like I said, with the electric stuff, you know, a cord to contend with the things. This is great. I really like it. My next uh, off-grid lawn tool that I prefer is a tiller. You know, a lot of people have gas tillers or electric, just like the other things, which all, of course, have their drawbacks. I bought this yard um, garden claw at a thrift store for two dollars. It has a little adjuster thing so you can adjust it for whatever your height is for what's most comfortable and it's extremely easy to use. You just push it down in the grass, you can even, you know, or not the grass, but your garden, you know, wherever it is you're trying to till up. You can even use your feet if you want to get it down in there further and then you just twist. So it's really easy to use, it goes really quickly and it's actually really effective. And it isn't that much work actually. A lot of people would think maybe this would be a lot of work and it really isn't. It's actually pretty good. So this is my choice for an off-grid tiller. The next thing I would like to talk about is an aerator. And many of you maybe saw my aerating video not long ago, so this is gonna be hopefully not too redundant. But this is the aerator that I have. It has a spot for where you put your foot. You just push it down into the ground, pull it back up. And then it has these two things where it pokes the holes into the ground and then the little plugs get ejected out the top as you're going through your lawn. Very fast, very effective, and it really doesn't take that much work since a lot of the work is pushing downward, which you do with your feet, and then you just pull it back up. I can do my whole lawn in 30 minutes, and it's really no big deal at all. Buy it once, works forever. No gas, no electric. My next 
garden tool would be hedge trimmers. My older brother just bought some hedge trimmers that were electric not that long ago, and they only lasted a year and they broke. They get all like stuck with like twigs and leaves and all these things, and it worked okay, but it was really loud. And because they were so loud, you almost had to wear earplugs, and with as short of a time as they lasted, it really wasn't a good investment. So I really prefer these types. We've had these for years, and they're a little on the rusty side, but they still work great. So you have to sharpen them just like, you know, many of the other tools um, that we have around, but it's no big deal, just once a season, and you're good to go. And then buy it once, and you're good to have them for a long time, so it's much better. The next tool I want to talk about is a leaf blower. Well, most people buy leaf blowers so they can blow their leaves around and things like that. Sometimes they have vacuums to suck them up and whatnot. But the problems with leaf blowers are that they're like a category five hurricane in your hands. They blow really hard. So the problem with that is that it can kick up dust and it can kick up pollen and all kinds of allergens and things. And so people have issues with breathing, definitely have problems with leaf blowers. And another thing that can kick up and in the air is um, mold and it can spread other things like that. And even garden diseases and pests and things that can blow and move around that wouldn't normally have that happen. So the best way to get rid of your leaves is just the old fashioned way with a rake. It's kind of like a yard comb that kind of like scratches at the ground and gets just the leaves and leaves everything behind without having to have like crazy amount of wind and then having to breathe in all that dust and debris and all that other stuff. So it works really good. Um, we really prefer this method. It's really not that much work. We can get the kids involved and it's actually pretty fun. So healthier and much more long lasting way of doing things. And then the last one I want to talk about is chainsaws. I am really afraid of using a chainsaw. There are lots of tools out there I don't mind using but chainsaws are not one of them. A little afraid of that one. Well anyway, so I'm really glad though that there are lots of alternatives. So what I use are several things actually. If it's just smaller branches or things, I'll use a handsaw with some nice uh, close together teeth. Um, it makes a really nice clean cut, way better for the tree than a chainsaw would be. Um, and then for kind of bigger branches or if I want to go, you know, faster, you know, a nice folding pruning saw like this works really good. It can get in there and really cut out a lot of branches quickly. And then for the higher up ones that are a little harder to get to, I have this pole saw and it works really good. It has both a little trimmer thing here, um, like kind of like a lopper, only it's higher up. You can pull a string and then it kind of cuts it off. Or of course it has this saw blade which you can do from the ground, which is much safer really than having to get on a ladder and having to get up in your trees with this extension rod, you know, and it telescopes too, you can really get high up in the tree and cut out lots and lots of branches, um, even big ones, without having to go up in the tree and use a big scary chainsaw. <laughs> so there are my suggestions. Our yard is one-tenth of an acre, so it's really not very big, which is probably why we're able to do all of this stuff without having to buy, make the investments of buying all of these equipments. Um, so all of this stuff was way less expensive to buy. It's way cheaper to maintain because it doesn't need gas, oil, electricity, any of that other stuff. And it's also a lot easier to use, in my opinion. Just to use the smaller stuff than have to bring out all the big equipment. It's smaller to store. It's so much easier, I think. It's really not that hard. And for us, you know, we're happy to have the exercise <laughs> to get to do when we're doing it anyway good for us. So um, I'm not against the bigger machines. I'm just saying if you have, um, you know, maybe a smaller yard or less, you know, projects to have to do with them and you want some, you know, smaller equipment to have to store and things like that, these are all great alternatives to having to buy those big expensive machines and to have to maintain them and store them and all of that jazz. So thanks for joining me. I hope you found this video helpful and for the green girl and we'll see you next time.